What's going on my friends? It's Nima here and today I'm gonna take you guys through a little bit of a whiplash as we're gonna start off talking about a game called Skim. A very artistic, I think emotionally reflective platformer slash kind of walking sim type of game. It's the antithesis, I believe, of what indie games are in many ways as it is a very unique game that I think just about anyone can pick up and play. Then on the other side of it, we got my first impressions, my first thoughts of The Darkest Dungeon 2 on the Nintendo Switch, which is the exact opposite. The game is cerebral, it's hopeless, it's rushing, and it is incredibly difficult. This is one of those games that I wouldn't say is a pick up and play for anyone, although I do think there's room for newcomers to check it out. But like always, before we get started, I have to plead and beg for you to please like and subscribe and share this video. I need all of your help to get this community even bigger and stronger, and I truly do appreciate each and every one of you guys. But let's talk about Skim, as I think that this is one of those games that become truly fascinating to me as the intelligence level to make a game like this. When I think to myself, how would you best describe or how would you best articulate any sort of emotional or mental issues, anxiety, depression, whatnot? I could not even perceive to think of something like this as being a catalyst for that kind of discussion or thought process when it comes to gaming. You know, I, I, you immediately go to like Psychonauts or something of that nature. But a game where you control a skim, a shadow if you will, of a little boy and you see the wonderment, the fun, the early stages of life and how much joy there is. You can almost even feel it in the gameplay itself as you do follow this child around for a little while. Oh, he's riding his trike, jumping on trampoline, things of that nature and you really do perceive the joy of being a child. You even follow this boy as he becomes a young man and he goes to school, he falls in love, he gets a first job and all of that wonderment of growing. But you also see all of the downsides, the losing of a relationship, losing a job, hopelessness, being in a situation where he's not happy. All this becomes overwhelming and ends up slipping and falling, which looks like it's nothing. But as the skim, we go flying from his body and you can actually see a color change in him. His aura is different. It's not the same. And it becomes incredibly clear that we need to catch our human to make him whole again. And this is really where the game kicks off. Most of what I described to you is very early on in the game, it's intro, tutorial, in a roundabout way, is it's really building up to the story of us playing as the skim, trying to catch our human. And this happens in over 50 bite-sized levels, as the tricks that we learned in the tutorial and the intro are the things that we can use moving forward. As you travel across town, you travel across busy streets and schools and across uh, industrial parks, as we jump from shadow to shadow. You see, you as a skim cannot be out in the sunlight for longer than like about a second or so and you'll just burn up and be taken right back to the last shadow that you were in. But there are many times when a shadow's just not readily available, especially with the lighting in this game as this is a very almost two-tone pastel art style which does an amazing job of telling a story through the art. The environment itself conveys a lot of emotions, mood, and story direction in general. But as it is two-toned, there is a lot of open space, which doesn't help us out because we are trying to get from shadow to shadow, and that's difficult when there's not a lot of shadows. Now, not always. In fact, in many times in this game, it doesn't become much of an issue, but there are opportunities for us to manipulate some of the objects that we are sitting in. Uh, anything from like a sign where you can sort of fling it back, you can pull it back and then fling yourself forward, or even street lights that you can manipulate. This doesn't happen too often, but there is enough of those sort of mechanics to keep the game fresh. Now I do wish that there was a few more in the game because there are moments in this game where it does kind of become repetitive. You just get done going through a very long busy street only to come up to another long busy street. Now thankfully most of the levels are three to five minutes long if even that. But they still rely on the same mechanics they did at the very beginning. Essentially a jump button and your bumpers which control the camera. That simple playstyle can add to two things. It can either become sort of monotonous or it can actually become more addictive. There is definitely a fine balance as I know there's been times where 
I kind of kept pushing myself to go a little bit further just because I wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted to see how much further I could go again and again and again. And it would end up turning a 30 minute play session into an hour and 30 minutes. So that sort of thing will definitely propel the game forward. But at the same time, it can also get repetitive. And though I wish that there was a few more mechanics sprinkled in, especially the further you got in the game, and maybe a little bit more storytelling and thrown in there as well, but I do get where throwing too much in could actually be the exact opposite of what they want, because this is a game that is relatively easy. I think most people can pick up and play, and that is probably the target audience they want. They don't want to make the game too complicated or throw too much at someone, because I do think that they want to target in on more of the general audience, not just the people who are obsessed with like speedrunning or super difficult platformers. This isn't like a, a Crash Bandicoot meets you know neon white kind of crowd that they're really marketing to. Not to say that they couldn't play it, because I do think that there's enough enjoyable content here for just about anyone to play. Play it. But before I get to my final score, I do have to shout out Key Mailer and thank them for a review copy of this game. Yeah, there is one negative thing about this game, and no, it's not performance, it actually performs really well. It's value. Again, with these indie games that are being priced just a little too high. Now, I have to be careful because last time I said Droz was $34.99 because that's what Nintendo.com said. But in reality, Droz was $24.99 with a discount at $9.99. So as of right now, on my Nintendo app, it says that Skim is $24.99 with a 10% discount down to like $22 something. That cost is just way too high if you ask me. I would say that this is a good game around $9.99, maybe $14.99, but much more than that. I think you're asking for way more than you have because like, this game is about a 3-5 to five hour game, which typically doesn't matter as long as it has good content, and it does, but it's very simplistic as we said before. Many aspects of the story are up to interpretation, there is very little to almost no replayability, meaning there's not a lot of collectibles, so I just don't really feel like there's enough here for this game to be valued at $25. So with the value where it is, I would say this game is a solid 7 out of 10. But that's just my thoughts, I'm curious what your thoughts are, if you guys have heard of this game, if you're looking into it, anything and everything in those comment sections. Now, now, for the other game I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to talk about it briefly because this is just a first impression kind of thing, but I have discovered that I absolutely love difficult games, which is very surprising to me. And I gotta be honest, when I talked about Morbid 2 and I said, oh, this game is really fun, a number of people say, no, this game is really hard. Okay, I guess so, I just felt it was challenging yet fun. And Darkest Dungeons 2 is no different. I mean, Darkest Dungeons 1 was difficult, and I think this is almost a perfect sequel. Meaning it really builds off of what was there and then adds to it. Adds a different level. If you played Darkest Dungeons 1, you know that for the most part, it's a dungeon crawler. And it feels kind of limiting, almost suffocating. As where this one takes you out to the open road, you have many, many more options. You have insight to where your destination is and pitfalls you might reach along the way although there is the element of surprise don't get me wrong but it's very interesting because you can come across some people and you can actually help them or you can steal from them and hurt them these things can also help and hurt you at the same time this is one of the things about the game that in the first one was very prevalent and is still there where everything can be like a gift and a curse you know you can do well in a dungeon or in a fight but at the same time y your characters could be slowly breaking because they're just so tired yeah they might be beasts out on the battlefield but mentally they're breaking down and this can cause all sorts of problems within your own party and if you're not familiar it is turn-based combat but the thing that I really like about it is things like buffs and debuffs really matter. There are so many games out there that have a lot of debuffs and you just never use them because enemies always seem to be completely resistant to them. That's not the case here. And even with the buffs, like they really help. It takes a lot out of you because you're not really meant to take too much damage. You know, you can take like maybe three or four hits before you're in some serious trouble. So to take a, an entire move and decide to just buff your party or buff a certain character, 
it can really open the door for much more damage so th there's also that give and take there's just so many things in this game where it's like this might really help out or this could really really end up hurting me I'm, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because i'm honestly i'm not that far into it and in fact i've already died like three times which is another thing about the game you're gonna just die like your party isn't gonna make it most of the time and once you kind of understand that and you just enjoy the experience and you collect what you have and you make sure that you're building on that you're making your character stronger you're making your team stronger you're unlocking new characters what can really make a huge difference all of those things can propel you to like this i don't know almost like rewarding end if you will now i can't say that because i haven't got to the end but every time you go further and further each time it just feels a lot better i don't know I, i'm having a ton of fun with it it's like my new addiction i swear that is probably what i'm going to be doing most of my vacation is playing darkest dungeons too and uh, i will do a review of the game as well when i'm finally done with it but let me know what your thoughts are on that too you guys been playing that game anything everything down in the comment section so much appreciated i love each and every one of you guys take care everyone Bye bye